We begin tonight with the most vivid sign yet America is returning to normal. A white male suspect has committed a tragic mass shooting of multiple members of a minority group. The shooting took place at three Atlanta area massage parlors. Six of the eight victims were Asian women. It would be extremely difficult and tone deaf to obfuscate those facts. Here's the police spokesperson obfuscating those facts. It's still early, but he does claim that it was not racially motivated. He apparently has an issue, uh, what he considers a, a, a sex fiction, and sees these locations as something that allows him to, to, um, to go to these places. And, and it's a temptation for him that he wanted to eliminate. Yesterday was a really bad day for him, and this is what he did. Exactly. Now, just because your actions target people of a certain race and your racist, sexist society puts women of that race in a place you see as shameful and encourages you to see them as temptations in your mind rather than people in the world, that's not some kind of race thing. If for some reason the killer was stuck inside all year, he might have seen this on television. We got hit by the, as I call it, the China virus. China is to blame for the coronavirus. Country that attacked us, China. I hold them responsible for what happened to my president. The left continues to deny the obvious fact that China distributed this virus. All the evidence, it's circumstantial, but all the evidence continues to point to the Institute of Virology in Wuhan. They want to blame it all on, on President Trump. He wasn't serving bat soup in, in the Wuhan <laughs> province. Now, no word yet of whether the people in those clips plan to sue the suspect for plagiarism once the cops release his manifesto. Now, Senator, given the troubling rise in Asian American hate crimes, do you think we're rushing to reopen a society that had no business being open in the first place? Look, first of all, we don't know exactly what happened in Atlanta, but what we do know is that when people aren't doing well and when they don't believe that their government will listen to them, uh, they're willing to go and take it out on someone else. And very often that someone else that they want to take it out on is somebody of a different ethnicity and throw in firearms to that mix and you've got a very toxic American problem that we have to deal with. Well, if the guy in handcuffs says his murders weren't rooted in racism, then who are we to say that's a cheap cop-out that allows the media to present hate crimes as more palatable to white audiences? It's an interesting tactic here, denying you committed a hate crime by claiming the person you hate most of all is yourself. So you're the victim. Now moving on, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell promised a scorched earth Senate should Democrats eliminate the filibuster, warning Democrats that they really have no idea the kind of bullshit Republicans are capable of. President whose teeth were built to endure up to three nuclear blasts, Joe Biden, had this to say. I don't think you have to eliminate the filibuster. You have to do it what it used to be when I first got to the Senate. You had to stand up and command the floor. Once you stop talking, you lost that, and someone could move in and say, I moved the question of. Seems to me Josh Hawley is begging for more opportunities to talk, but sure, we could try that. Senator, you've said that filibuster reform will become more popular once Republicans look like they're acting in bad faith. Pretty cynical of you to predict Republicans would act in bad faith like they've done before, always and forever. Yeah, I think we need to change it. Um... At the moment, even with the Senate tied more or less, the Republicans represent 40 million fewer Americans than the Democrats. And yet they want to take legislation that 70, 80 percent of Americans support and blockade it. And if they want to blockade legislation that 70 and 80 percent of Americans support, the onus ought to be on them to do the heavy lifting of actually getting on the floor and working to block it. Now, I'm from Old Britannia, so I'm not sure about this exactly, but now Mitch McConnell is your king equivalent, correct? Uh, a king implies absolute power, so yes, right. that's correct. You know what I like about you, Senator? When it comes to Senate reform, you're a disruptor, which is why I want to That is the worst segue I've ever heard to pitching your app, Austin. I'll tell you what's the worst. Apps not created by and for disruptors. Holy shit. Sorry about this, Senator. Don't answer any phone calls from the most gentrified areas of Brooklyn. I'm not gentrifying. I've been there for 18 months. Austin, this is not what the show's about. Now, moving on, Senator, you wrote a letter encouraging Urging Attorney General Merrick Garland to investigate an extremely far-fetched conspiracy theory that Brett Kavanaugh's confirmation process might have had political influence. You expressed concern about what appears to have been a politically constrained and perhaps fake FBI investigation into alleged misconduct by now Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh. We haven't heard comment from Justice Kavanaugh at this hour, but we're still in the 72-hour St. Patrick's Day window. Senator, can we really blame the FBI for failing to vet a white man who has evaded scrutiny at every stage of his extraordinarily privileged Life. Yeah, actually, I think uh, you can. And I think it's important that we measure what the FBI actually did in the Kavanaugh background investigation against their own policies and procedures. Particularly, I've been concerned about the so-called tip line that they claimed to stand up 
through which they actually got tips, but it doesn't look like they ever looked at any of the tips. Yes, and uh, just a reminder to our viewers, we do have a tip line here. Compliments only, please. The rest will go in the garbage. Now, after California Governor and first Beyond Meat human Gavin Newsom openly speculated on whom he'd appoint to replace her, Senator Dianne Feinstein used one of her biannual lucid moments to respond, saying, I mean, you're making a mountain out of a molehill. Pressed on whether she felt physically able to serve, Feinstein said, absolutely, I think that's pretty obvious. She then dry swallowed a pill the size of a quarter pounder with cheese and headed into her grandson's retirement party. Senator, should Feinstein stick it to Newsom by serving another 30 years? Look, Diane is um, one of the most dignified and kind people in the Senate. She's had one of the most distinguished careers of any senator. And however she chooses to end her career, she should be allowed to do so with great dignity and with our respect. That's a, that's a very nice eulogy.